What do you guys know about mycotic aneurysms? Do you know who that guy is? That's right. You know where he's from? Oh, that's right. That's the end of the presentation. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no, so this, this is not his arm. There's no conspiracy theory here. Um, but uh, w we do have uh, a decent series of uh, mycotic aneurysms. Dr. Delshaw, we're talking about your favorite thing. This is uh, mycotic aneurysms. Yeah. Do you know who that guy is? He's showing his age yet to look. No. That's Kurt Cobain. He's from this band they call Nirvana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. So I just wanted. To, uh, that's right. That's right. Uh, so. Uh, what do you think of uh, when you see a hemorrhage like this? Um, obviously, we're talking about mycotic aneurysms, but in a, in a young patient with an intrapregnal hemorrhage that's distal, um, it's important to to think about mycotic aneurysms. And um, one of the things that uh, I have learned the hard way once is that MRA is not a great modality to look for these problems. Um, and the reason for that is typically the MRA, the, the time of flight sequence will go to about here, uh, but it won't go to about here. Uh, and so you can actually miss, uh, miss stuff on that. So typically we do a CTA, uh, and you can see on this one there's a uh, very small abnormality adjacent to the hemorrhage. Uh, and then you can see on the angiogram there's a very distal uh, mycotic aneurysm. So what are your, what are your options when you see that any any ideas just clip it okay what's another option what's that trap and bypass what's that the rise of yeah this, those are your three options and depending on where it is anatomically um, that kind of determines what we do. So in a ruptured case, there's a, there's a high chance that that aneurysm is going to rupture again. Um, in an unruptured mycotic aneurysm, we generally, a kind of good rule of thumb that, that I carry on in my head is that a third will get smaller with antibiotics, a third will stay the same, uh, and a third will get bigger. And the ones that get bigger are, are prone to rupture. If it's already ruptured, you have to do something. You have to seal it off one way or another. And so... Depending on where it is, if it's in a frontal branch that's going to nowhere, then typically we can go up with a microcatheter and either um, use onyx or coils, whatever your choice is. If it's in a region uh, of eloquent brain, then that's when you have to do, uh, as was mentioned, trap and bypass, uh, distal to that. Um, typically what happens at surgery if you just clip these things is the vessel just falls apart right in front of you. So. Um, it's all diseased and it's kind of like wet tissue paper. So you have to kind of prepare for that. Uh, and this one, we just uh, sacrificed the vessel with uh, onyx um, and got a nice result without any clinical sequelae. Um, another case is a 19 year old who um, had some uh, wisdom teeth done, had some vegetations uh, and then uh, went on and had a CT scan which showed uh, this hemorrhage. Uh, and then uh, this CT angiogram, which shows this uh, pretty nasty mycotic aneurysm of the middle cerebral. Uh, and that's, uh, that's what it looks like on angio. So do you think this is something that we can take down or do we just do a bypass or how, how do we tell? Any ideas? You could, you could do that, or an awake craniotomy. You do an awake craniotomy, that'd be one way to do it. Um, that's not particularly fun. Another thing you can do, uh, which we did in this case, is uh, we did a super selective water test. So um, what you can do is actually uh, get right up into that vessel with a microcatheter and then inject amitol when the guy's awake uh, and see if there's any change, make sure you can move everything. Uh, if it's on the left side, make sure you can talk. Um, and um, that's what we did in this case. And then we're just able to 
uh, take down the vessel. Um, and that was actually really effective. Um, so that's just kind of another uh, trick that you can have uh, up your sleeve. Um, and then he went on to uh, be discharged on antibiotics and did fine from all of that, um, from a potentially pretty nasty looking aneurysm. <laughs> that's all I want to say about that. 